I am here at Madame Meerkats and a lot of you know that I mention Madame Meerkats all the time for getting jewelry like this and other goods. And I'm here to actually interview the owner, Horace. He not only gave us a tip that the bus that we have now was for sale, but he was also one of the first van lifers that we met. My name is Horace Long. I am an entrepreneur. I currently own two businesses. One is The Bearded Heart, which is a line of graphic t-shirts. And then I own a metaphysical store called Madame Meerkat's Cabinet of Curiosities, which is located in Wilmington, North Carolina. We are here. I first figured out about van life, found out about it, um, I think it was probably four or five years ago. I'm always on YouTube. I love YouTube. I'm a YouTube junkie. So I stumbled across uh, van life and I mean, back in the early 90s, I had a Volkswagen van again. And the dream was always to have it be a Westifaya, but I couldn't afford a Westifaya back then. So I just had like a van again and lived in it for about three months traveling across the country. Um, and so once I discovered more about actual what they're calling van life now, I was completely intrigued. It took me a few years and then about a year and a half ago, I bought my first van for van life and had it for six months. I bought an old used Sprinter, thinking that, hey, I'll buy an old Sprinter. They're good for a million miles, so they say, not realizing that a van with 300,000 miles on it was gonna be problematic. And so after we, we, I mean, my mechanic and I that I was working with, we replaced everything that we could think of and trying to start anew. And there were so many problems with this van. It was never right and we could never figure it out. So I ended up saying, screw this. And I went out and bought a brand new Ram Promaster, which is the, in Europe, it's the Fiat Ducato. And it's uh, won tremendous amounts of awards in Europe. And it's what most Europeans use for van life next to the Sprinters. I'm a traveler. I have traveled the globe. I have driven across the United States uh, 13 times now. I love driving. I love being on the road. So this was just, it was a no brainer. Get a divorce, buy a van, and move into the van with your dog. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Most van lifers are digital nomads. The ones you see on Instagram and YouTube. I am not a digital nomad. I have a physical store. I have a physical studio where I you know, make the t-shirts and stuff. So I'm living locally and living inside my van. I do travel regularly. I go on buying trips to buy crystals for the store. I, I wanna go mining, get to my own crystals for the store. The great thing about having the van is that I don't have to pay for a hotel room. No matter where I go, I can just park it. It's stealth so I can park on the street and no one knows I'm in the van. What a lot of people don't realize is that in the United States, it is illegal to live inside your vehicle if you're on a public street. Now, if you're on a private property, it's not a problem. So here at the store, I'm in my parking lot, it's private, I'm legal. Um, or I can stay in a friend's driveway and that's legal. But if I'm parked on the street, I have to keep it stealth and not let anyone know. The pros for living in a van are that I never have to worry about forgetting my It's always right there. My house is right there. So I have everything I need with me almost all the time. I can go visit friends and I don't have to um, impose on them. You know, I can go see them. They don't have to worry about fixing me a stay place to stay. I have my own bathroom. I have my own shower. I'm self-contained. 
I don't have rent. I don't have a mortgage. Um, so I'm saving a tremendous amount of money. As far as cons go, it's 72 square feet. Okay, I have a mini fridge, which in van life is a humongous refrigerator. I have extra battery capacity just so I can have this beautiful retro mini fridge, and which then makes my bed 36 inches high. Then you add the mattress on top of that. So climbing into bed is not the simplest thing. Um, I'm getting used to it. Tiny living is, 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 is a con, definitely. You have a minimal amount of space, minimal amount of things you can have. Um, it's cut down on how much stuff I buy and how much stuff I acquire. I can't really have more than one person visiting me at a time. I've had three people hang out in the van and have cocktails. It's worked. It's still, it's tight. If it's a rainy day and you're stuck in a van, it's a tiny space to be stuck in. Where you live in a bus and you have the luxury of having your bedroom and your banquet. And a partner. And <laughs> Worst con is that I'm a single, I'm a single man, and I'm of a certain age. So when somebody says, "Where do you live?" when you're trying to date, and you're like, "I live in Midtown," what neighborhood? I live in my car. Yay, winning! Do what you can, when you can, on your build out. Get what you can afford and what you're comfortable with. If I was in my 20s, I would have stuck with that Sprinter because in my 20s, I always had cars that broke down. That van again broke down all the time because A, it's a van again, and that's what they do. So that was fine. At my age now, I don't want to be breaking down, so I had to go, so I decided to buy a brand new one. But I wish I had just not been so caught up in the van life videos and wanting the perfect beautiful van with everything perfect in it. Although I do want every luxury that I could have in a home so that I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. Just do what you can as you can. Watch videos, learn how to create, to do whatever project you want to do first. If it's insulation, just insulate it and not worry about the next step till you get to it. Put your floor down, figure out how to do that, and then just start doing it as you go. It's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be ideal. And when you're done with things, you're always going to wish you had done them in another way. Or you're going to find things that you need and can use in a different way. So don't worry about that. Don't stress about that. Just do it. And smile. Yay! <laughs> Thank you for watching this video and for Horace's insight on what it is like to be an urban van lifer. And if you were disappointed at not having a tour of his van, that's because he is redoing all of the electronics in his van. And I'll tell you what, we know what it's like to be doing the electronics in your tiny home. <laughs> so tune in next week. We're going to be finishing up the solar and going to be talking about our upcoming trips and that sort of thing and moving in to the bus. We only have a few weeks left before we are full timers in this bus. Super exciting. As always, thank you for following along with this crazy journey of ours. Thank you to Nick and Emily and all of our Patreons out there who have been supporting us through these crazy times. Things are going to get even better from here. Thanks again.